This week, we're talking about the only animal that could take four aimless teenagers and teach them ninja skills. That's right, we're talking about rats. I'm Maggie Smith, and this is Chicago Explained. Pest control company Orkin placed Chicago as number one on their list of top 50 rattiest cities. Now this puts us ahead of New York and Los Angeles, and the only things Los Angeles should be ahead of us are cities that Kurt Russell has escaped from, babies with asthma, and races to the Pacific Ocean. According to a Chicago Tribune analysis, there were almost 47,000 rat complaints in Chicago last year, and there's an expected increase for 2017. Now when it comes to rats, like the number of Facebook events at the Bean, there's no way to accurately estimate the full amount that there are. But today, we're going to give you the lowdown on these rodents and how we can prevent them from taking over our streets. So, what kind of rats are we talking about here? The most common rat breed found in Chicago is the Norway rat. You can recognize them by their brown fur, long tails, and sleek modernist architecture. They can grow up to about 16 inches from head to tail and weigh about a pound. They, like my five-year plans, can live anywhere from 6 to 12 months. Many have up to seven litters in a year, which fosters insanely quick population growth. 15,000 new rats can come from a single male and female in one year. Their infestations are only rivaled by roaches and podcasts about two white guys just talking, you know? So where do rats live within the city? Rats typically live in underground nests in burrows about a foot deep beneath the ground. Many have made burrows around the city, and while yet other rats have moved on to Miami. However, to acclimate to metropolitan environments, rats can, like your coworkers' comedy groups, often improvise. However, unlike your coworkers' comedy group, Law Law Land, they're actually pretty good. Meaning they can make nests in places like tree trunks and, in your worst fear, realized homes. Some rats can squeeze through holes as small as a quarter within your home's walls and plastic garbage cans to nest. They are crazy stealthy and often live alongside humans unnoticed. Why do rats prefer to live in Chicago? Well, Chicago is actually a perfect breeding ground for rats. Also young infielders. We have plenty of shelter with our warm underground infrastructure for the CTA, and we have plenty of food with our obscene amount of trash and food waste lying around, as well as a ton of pet waste. Yeah, all those clean up after your pet signs are mainly so your pet's duty doesn't attract vermin. The guaranteed food source that humans contribute, combined with the low number of natural predators, makes rats thrive in city environments like people who did theater in high school. Okay, so why all the fuss all of a sudden? Humans and rats have coexisted in cities forever, like Bert and Ernie, or skyscrapers in King Kong, or Logan Square in shooting an episode of Chicago PD. Yet humans hate rats. But why? Other similar animals are considered adorable, like squirrels and chipmunks and Ariana Grande. We don't seem to have an issue with them. So what's the big deal? Are rats even something to stress about? Yes, kind of. City rats can carry several harmful diseases that can spread from humans, like salmonella from feces or fur, typhus from fleas, Lyme disease from ticks, and the bubonic plague from the 14th century. No, seriously, the Black Death is still around today. Like Nazis. Additionally, if bitten or scratched by a rat, you could get something literally called rat bite fever, which is a nasty bacterial disease. You don't even have to be in direct contact with a rat to get some of these illnesses. Many are spread from contact with rat feces, urine, or fur. Even if you don't roll around in rat feces all day, the stuff is everywhere, like poke bowls or invites to La La Land's shows. The boom in rat complaints these days is due in part to the increased construction within Chicago. New developments have displaced many rats and forced them to move to communities elsewhere around the city, which is kind of a fun way to get your karma for gentrifying a neighborhood. Also, it explains the increase in cheese shops. Neighborhoods like Lincoln Park, Lakeview, and Logan Square have seen huge spikes in rat sightings compared to previous years, almost as much as the increased sightings of craft IPAs. Additionally, in the past two years, Chicago has experienced more mild winters. Cold weather can usually bring less rat exposure as they burrow away to stay warm. Others speculate the rise in complaints could be because the city's new rat warning posters depict a more realistic picture of a rat, to which I say, realistic? So what's Chicago's system for controlling rats? To deal with rats, the Department of Streets and Sanitation distributes large plastic garbage carts to residents with strong lids on the grounds that if rats can't feed, they can't breed. Am I right, ladies? Buy me some dinner first. The department's 311 non-emergency hotline is where residents are urged to report any rat sightings, not to be mistaken with the 211 hotline, which is for Bill Murray sightings. Once dispatched, workers bait the rats using rodent side in their burrows. The most common form of rat baiting has been poisonous pellets. These green pellets cause rats to perish within hours of consumption. 
Because of this delay, rats will often have time to get back to their burrows to die. Their carcasses may be trapped in your walls, and besides being smelly, they can still carry many of the diseases they had while living. So it's kind of like how flipping over the Monopoly board doesn't mean you still didn't lose, Mary. Another problem with poisonous pellets is they can often kill or harm animals not targeted, like household pets and birds. This can cause serious long-term damage to your pets, our ecosystems, and the environment. So what's being done now? Well, in an effort to cut back on poison and the recent boom in rat reports, the city has now turned to new experimental rat control methods. One of these methods is dry ice, frozen carbon dioxide. City officials place dry ice into rats' burrows and then block the opening, letting the dry ice turn from solid form to gas, which puts the rats to sleep before suffocation. This is a controversial method because normally Chicagoans are used to asphyxiation taking four quarters. Though effective and cheaper than poison, in 2016 the EPA banned dry ice on the grounds that the substance was being used illegally without government approval. A more natural alternative is employing feral cats to hunt rats, a solution proposed by the world-renowned doctors Whiskers and Kitty Paws. The Treehouse Humane Society of Chicago has a green project that takes vaccinated and neutered feral cats and relocates them to areas where caretakers can give them a second chance, like I keep doing for Chipotle. When will I learn? In return, the cats hunt and kill rodents infested within the area, like the Terminator, but with a cute little bell. The method has proved hugely successful. But wait, 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 wait. Why do we have to kill the little guys? Is killing rats the only long-term solution? Well, maybe not. In an attempt to create a more long-term solution, Chicago has started testing ContraPest, a digestible substance that makes rats infertile over time. Like using your laptop right on your crotch. It's environmentally safe and non-toxic, so Chicago will use ContraPest for six months to determine its effectiveness for regular use in 2018. Mayor Emanuel announced Chicago will add five new rat baiting teams and 10,000 new garbage cans to the 2018 budget, as well as a strongly worded letter. Yet, of all the methods used to control rats, the most effective is still waste management. So clean up after your dogs, put the lid on your trash cans, and stop hosting cheese nights in your alleyways, guys. But also remember, though the rat population is crazy high right now and we're taking active strides to lower it, it's not like rats are inherently evil creatures and they should all die. They're not people who use speakerphone on the L. It's fair to say we don't want them in our homes and we don't want their diseases, but also remember, rats are here to stay. Though a nuisance, rats have been around as long as we have, and we have to share our environment with them. We aren't the only ones living in the city. It's us, the rats, and the flying humanoid. No, it's out there, and it's real. So at the end of the day, human, humanoid, or rodent, remember that we all deserve a place in this rat race. Sorry, too cheesy.